The battle for Springfield continues when Serpentor's forces are lured into a trap, and Don Moreno makes a tough choice. Who will be struck down, and who will survive? Let's find out in our review of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero number 310 from Image Comics and Skybound. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero number 310. This issue gives diehard G.I. Joe fans everything they want, which you can only get in a G.I. Joe comic. You get pitch-perfect military jargon and tactics, authentic twists and turns that come with the unpredictability of a battlefield, and heroic moments. That said, this issue has a few rough spots, mostly in the dialogue, that take you out of the action a little bit. Let's talk about what happened in the last issue. When last we left the fighting forces in G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero number 309, Dawn Moreno came face to face with the police officer who gunned down her parents in Springfield. The Dreadnoughts fought Serpentor's cyber-enhanced mutant soldiers. Cobra Commander inspired his soldiers with his battlefield exploits, but not exactly. And Serpentor decided to join the fight in person. And that brings us to the current issue. In G.I. Joe, Real American Hero number 310, the battle for Springfield continues in earnest. Zartan, Baroness, and the Dreadnoughts fight their way through Springfield. Cobra Commander's recon units notice the interlopers, so he orders his Crimson Guard guardsmen to intercept. Meanwhile, Don Moreno decides to set the police officer who killed her parents free from his burning patrol car. If nothing else, Larry Hama knows how to keep multiple threads going with purpose and meaning. Cobra Commander now recognizes Destro's forces could present a complication, which could be a distraction from victory and Dawn's choice to save her parents' killer turns into a moral victory for her at least. Those plot lines have nothing to do with each other, technically speaking, but they share a setting and both are meaningful in their own way. Sadly, Dawn's rescue scene takes a hit with oddly unnecessary stiff dialogue from the police officer as he explains what Dawn's doing. We can see what Dawn's doing. There's no need to explain it. And it just comes off as a little bit clunky and weird. Serpentor and his remaining forces depart Cobra Island, but the Joe Recon team is spotted rowing away from shore. On the dinghy, they discuss using the frozen clone in the container they confiscated from Dr. Mindbender to resurrect the original Serpentor as a countermeasure to Serpentor Khan. The Joe's plan runs into a hiccup, however, when Serpentor sends one of his fighters to strafe the dinghy. Strafing the dinghy, of course, adds an element of danger and challenge for the Joes but their plan to resurrect the original Serpentor is worth its weight in gold. Hama drops a bomb of a concept, in a, in a good way, to keep fans hooked to see what happens if the plan works out. Sadly, again, this scene takes a hit for stiff, unnecessary dialogue by the Joes explaining to each other why the strafing run wasn't completely effective. We can see the rounds didn't hit the container with the frozen clone. Who cares why they didn't hit everything? They're sort of analyzing the strafing run after the fact as though they were somehow critiquing it. It doesn't matter. Why are you explaining it? Back in Springfield, the Crimson Guardsman posing as Cobra Commander finds the Dreadnoughts and opens fire. Baroness is mortally wounded with a shot to the chest. Desperate to save her life, Zartan packs the Baroness into his vehicle and speeds off. Meanwhile, the Ninja Recon team finds Dawn after she saved the police officer's life. They don't have much time to praise her before a group of mutants attack. The issue concludes with Zartan offering the Ninja team a temporary truce for personal reasons. Cobra Commander preparing to spring a trap, which was the whole point of beating a strategic retreat, shall we say, and Destro following Serpentor's example. Overall, G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero number 310 gives Joe fans everything they want out of a military action comic with intriguing plot developments, tension-filled twists and turns in the heat of battle, and the promise of more to come, especially with the last page reveal, which we won't spoil here. Unfortunately, multiple scenes are marred by stiff, unnecessarily dialogue that explains things that honestly just don't need to be explained, so it takes you out of the moment. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Paul Pelletier and Tony Cordos continue to do an excellent job capturing the heat and chaos of battle while keeping the visuals flowing smoothly. It would be very easy for a lot of threads all on the same battlefield, all at the same time, going nuts on each other to turn into a mess, visually speaking, but they keep it straight, and that's exactly what you want. The choreography is well done, the character designs look great, and on the whole, the entire issue drips with dramatic visuals. You want a pulse-pounding, deeply, <laughs> deeply serious action war melodrama, and you get it. 
Taking a step back for just a second and talking about the big picture, new readers who've picked up this issue may wonder where this story fits into the Energon universe from Skybound. It doesn't. Well, I'll clarify. Since Skybound picked up the G.I. Joe license, this series, which is the original series that came from IDW, is a direct continuation, but it is in a separate timeline and universe from the interconnected Energon universe. You won't see any Transformers showing up. You won't hear any talk of Energon or advanced technology. This is effectively a continuation of the original series in its own separate universe. Final thoughts, what do we think about G.I. Joe, a real American hero number 310? It's a Joe fan's dream with plenty of hardened military action, battle tactics, and war strategy. Larry Hama keeps a multitude of threads moving forward with surprises and purpose, and the art team's delivery looks great. That said, sadly, there's a little bit of a downside here, and it comes by way of a few scenes that are hindered by rough, unnecessary exposition that explains things that don't need to be explained. Therefore, G.I. Joe, A Real American Hero, number 310, earns an 8 out of 10. Solid score all the way around. Even with the plethora of new writers Skybound is bringing on to expand the Energon universe, nobody does G.I. Joe better than Larry Hama, even if his delivery in this issue is a bit imperfect. But what do you think? Do you prefer the OG G.I. Joe comics, or do you like what Skybound is doing in the Energon universe better? Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and drop a comment below with which Energon title is your favorite so far. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, get a look at all the preview pages and variant covers, and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.